Racing an Ironman is obviously an amazing achievement and for most, just completing one is the obvious target. But for some, they may be looking to better their time. And the obvious place to start and to look to is the bike. Yeah, and that's where the six hour bike split comes in. It's a pretty common goal. And if you can get under six hours on a bike, you're gonna put yourself in a very good position for a decent time. So that's where we're here to guide you, how to cycle a sub six bike split. Right, now let's start with some basic numbers. Now, obviously the Ironman bike leg is 180K or 112 miles. And to complete that and enter T2 in under six hours, that requires you traveling at a speed of 30 kilometers an hour or faster, or 18.67 miles an hour. Now that is certainly not an insignificant speed, particularly over that kind of duration and distance. So how do we go about targeting that goal? Well, like you said, Mark, obviously 112 miles is a very long way. So first up, you've actually got to significantly increase your volume. You need to kind of address that area before you can start looking at the speed. So that's where we're going to start. Consistency is obviously key with any type of training, but even more so when it comes to training for an Ironman bike split. And you're going to have to spend a fair amount of time working in zone two, so building those aerobic base miles. And this is where the long ride comes in. So ideally, you want to perform one long ride per week. And it's going to be working in zone two, like I said, so around 85% of your threshold heart rate and around 65% of your threshold power. And these rides need to be around four hours. You don't want to be getting carried away and thinking you've got to do 100 miles or more each week. You're just going to get mentally and physically tired. And ideally, if you can start to build these for around four to five months out, just once a week to get that base in. And then as you get closer to your race, so around eight weeks out, this is when you'll start to work in zone three and putting in some harder efforts and also start to increase the length of those rides where you will get up to around six hours. And that will give you that confidence and that brilliant base to put the rest on top of. Oh yes, the long ride is a pretty key and fundamental workout, but you can nicely complement that indoors on the indoor trainer. Now, many people are pretty time precious and actually being on the indoor trainer, we can get some serious bang for our butt in a short space of time. Now, this is a great opportunity to work on some slightly more intense workouts around zone three, sweet spot, zone four, basically allowing you to raise that ceiling, raise your threshold, and ultimately allow you to dial into that race pace and travel at 30 kilometers an hour faster. It's also a brilliant chance to practice being in the aero bars. Now, do not underestimate the power of aerodynamics, particularly when we're trying to go a sub six hour bike split. So use this opportunity to practice and get comfortable in the aero bars and use these intense workouts to do that. So an example workout for this after doing a good warm up, obviously with some intervals to prep you well, will be a main set of six lots of 10 minutes at zone three with two minutes spin between, building up to in a subsequent session to four lots of 15 minutes at zone three with three minutes spin between, then maybe to three lots of 20 minutes with a five minute spin between, and ultimately two lots of 30 minutes zone three with five minutes easy spin between. And trying to hold and get into the aero bars on those zone three intervals to get nice and comfortable. And Finally, try to do these key long workouts solo if possible. I know it may be tempting to join others and join club rides, but ultimately, when you're in Ironman, it is non-drafting. You will be riding solo, so try to get comfortable doing these intervals in the same style. Now, no matter how hard you've trained or how well you stuck to your training program, you are going to have to actually consider the course and it depends how much you're chasing this sub six hour when you're looking at the overall picture because actually trying to hold around 90 miles an hour or 30 kilometers per hour over this distance is quite challenging on certain courses. Obviously, you're going to have to take into consideration your budget and your traveling circumstances, but 
there are some courses that are going to lend themselves to a faster time. For example, you've got really flat, fast courses in Arizona and in Florida. Then you've got more rolling versions in Europe. And in the UK, well, they tend to be a little bit hillier and they're going to make getting sub six that much harder. Okay, so you're nicely armed and ready with specific volume, training, workouts, and even perhaps know where you're going to race at this point. But that is only really part of the puzzle. How you execute your ride on race day has almost the biggest bearing of them all. So firstly, I'd recommend that you do your homework. You know the course, you know the terrain, how many laps, maybe even if there's any technical sections and where they lie on the course. You may even want to look at the prevailing wind and maybe even the typical wind direction. Now, of course, you always want to strive for a well-paced and even ride, which is easier on a flat course, but some courses are hilly or they have quite strong winds at some point. So it's important, again, to know where they lie in the course, because if you do start to lose that speed, then you can stay calm knowing that you perhaps are going to gain that back later into the race. And then lastly, you want to go in with a good nutrition plan. Now, it is all too easy when you're striving for a goal and a target is to get carried away in that moment. But as anyone will tell you, once you do start to feel hungry and thirsty, it's almost too late. So try to stick to that nutrition plan right from the outset. And after all, you do need to remind yourself, regardless of going after this sub six hour bike split, you still have a marathon to do. So you need to be adequately full fueled for that. Well, riding 112 miles in under six hours is obviously a pretty big deal, especially in the middle of an Ironman. But with some structured training and hopefully your tips today, you'll be well under your way. Yeah, well, good luck with that challenge. Let us know if you're close to it, if it's a goal that you've put in your diary. If you've enjoyed it, give us a like. Remember, you can follow us on our social media and you can also subscribe to us here on YouTube.